So snacking is, a, is an important part of your overall eating pattern. Usually people snack in the late afternoon, so somewhere around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and that's kind of a bridge between your lunch and your dinner. And the purpose of having a snack then, it's, a, it's a typically a lower calorie meal, it's a mini meal, uh, you are, you're aiming for about 250 calories, and that helps you uh, to get to dinner. By having a snack around that time of day, it's going to help you to feel not so famished at dinner, where you're just grabbing anything, maybe eating too quickly, or snacking too close to dinner, which really makes dinner a super huge meal. Uh, so, so snacking also gives you, aside from providing that bridge for you, it also uh, helps to maintain your energy level throughout the afternoon. A lot of people kind of suffer from um, you know, ups and downs in their energy level um, as they go through the day. And by balancing out the pattern in which you eat, having a good breakfast, good lunch, a little mini meal called a snack around you know, mid-afternoon, and then dinner, now I've got a more even keeled uh, blood sugar throughout the day, and that also corresponds to uh, more even energy throughout the day. So a lot of people snack uh, because they like certain kinds of tastes or they have cravings for certain things. They may like things that are crunchy, salty, sweet, whatever, and they get those cravings. And so that's what they're reaching for as a snack. And that's an important cue. You want to pay attention to that. And so we're going to talk today about you know, what those cravings might be and how you can satisfy those cravings in a nutritional way. One of the uh, more obvious types of cravings is salty. Um, if you're somebody that is kind of a salt seeker, you may find that you're reaching for potato chips or things like that. So some good alternatives to that are some other kinds of salty foods. So if you've never tried kale chips, you may want to try that. Those are like potato chips but made out of kale, so they're pretty nutrient dense. Popcorn is another good option. You can make popcorn. We're talking about plain popcorn that you pop, and then you can add to it some kind of spice or herbs. So you may want to add Italian seasoning to it. Um, you could add um, some brewer's yeast, which gives it a kind of a cheesy flavor on top. Um, or you can add things like uh, cayenne pepper, uh, something hot and spicy, a Moroccan spice blend or a curry blend or something like that to give it a little bit of heat and a more intense flavor. Another good salty food is nuts. And you can get, uh, there's obviously a wide range of nut, types of nuts that you can get. And you can even get them where some of them have been um, roasted or they've had some flavoring added to them. I know that some kinds of nuts come with chocolate on top or like chocolate um, cocoa powder on top. Um, so any of those types of things are, are good uh, salty alternate snacks. So a lot of people like sweet food and um, they crave sweet things for a snack. Nutritious alternatives, uh, if you are craving something sweet, are obviously fruit. A nice thing to do with fruit also is you can freeze some fruits like uh, grapes and that will provide you with something that's sweet and cold if you like that kind of thing. That can be a good alternative to ice cream as well. You can also have dried fruit so that comes in a variety of flavors and you can mix and match those. And what about chocolate? Everybody loves chocolate. Almost everybody loves chocolate. Cocoa is actually very good for you. It has a lot of antioxidants and also other nutrients in it that are good for you. So what you want to do is you want to aim for something that is close to pure as possible. Now it's, it's not quite possible to get 100% because that's going to be too bitter. So if you aim for 70 or 80% or above, then that's a good choice. What you don't want to do is eat chocolate that's had a lot of sugar and caramel and other things added to it. So chocolate is actually a nice choice for you if you're, if you're craving chocolate. Cacao nibs are also something that will help you fix that chocolate craving. So if you're, you're craving chocolate, then you may want to try a snack like cacao nibs, maybe with some banana, and that's going to give you that chocolate and banana. Um, taste that everybody loves. Some people also crave crunchy or chewy snacks. So uh, one thing that's important here is for you just to generally become aware of what is it that you're craving. Is it salt? Is it sweet? Is it crunchy? Is it chewy? And then look for alternatives that you can work into your snacks. So good alternates for um, crunchy things are nuts, whole grain crackers, raw vegetables, peanut butter and celery, any of those things that will give you that crunch. So if you like chewy things, then you wanna, might want to reach for things like dried fruit, that's going to be a little bit more chewy, or even buffalo jerky. Jerky comes in all sorts of different qualities. It's good and chewy, but you want to make sure that you're, you're picking something like buffalo that's very, very lean. 
So another thing to consider is sometimes you sometimes you just like to have something that's going to be cold. Um, ice cream is a common cold snack that people will have. So there's some good alternatives to um, ice cream, which is not nutritious really at all. Um, first of all, you can exchange ice cream just for soy vanilla ice cream, so that's going to take out the cholesterol and a lot of the sugar, so that's one alternative. You can also go to sorbets, which are really just fruit that is frozen with water and lemon juice. Try to get a very low sugar sorbet if you're going to reach for sorbet. You can also take some kinds of fruit and freeze them, and then they'll be ready for you to eat. Um, grapes, blueberries are a good example of a fruit that can be frozen. You can just pull them out and pop them in your mouth to have that that cold and sweet flavor. For those cold days you may be craving something warm. So on those days you may want to reach for soup, especially a broth based soup. Miso soup is a great snack to have. You can put a few things in it like some tofu, some spinach, some kale to make it a little bit more nutrient dense or you can just drink it right out of the cup. You may also want to try oatmeal or baked apple with cinnamon on it or even just a cup of hot chai tea. So there are a lot of really good snack options and you may want to experiment with different snacks to see what works for you. Some people like a blend, like a trail mix type blend that you can make with cereals, nuts, seeds, dried fruit, that kind of thing. Um, other people prefer something warm like a cup of soup, something cold, again like maybe frozen frozen grapes or something like that. You can also have leftovers, you know, from the night before if you have, um, if you had something for dinner, and you can have a small portion of that the next day um, as your snack. Just try to keep it to less than 250 calories. If you can, incorporate a whole grain into that because that's going to give you the fiber and help to fill you up. It's also going to give you a little bit more energy than some of the other type of food choices. So, like a whole grain English muffin, you can cut that in half, maybe have a little bit of peanut butter on there and that's a great snack to have midday. Just remember that snacking is a bridge between meals. It shouldn't be an extra meal that you have during the day, but it's a bridge that you have. It is also important to have a snack. So some people make the mistake of having too many snacks. Other people make the mistake of not having a snack at all, finding themselves to be too hungry a little bit later on. Just make sure that you always have a snack on hand, something that you enjoy, something that's nutritious, something that will get you to the next meal.